Hi and welcome to the Windows Kernel Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. We'll start by doing a quick introduction to the course to see what we're going to learn in this course, what's the background that you need to have in order to get the most out of this course and then we'll just get going. Our first model is going to be about the I.O. system where kernel drivers reside as well so we want to get a deeper understanding of how I.O. operates in, the, in Windows. In module 2 we'll look at how to write a very simple device driver to make sure we understand the fundamentals and see how to install and load up such a driver. To write more complex drivers we're going to have to, to use something called a request packet or handle a request packet which are data structures within the kernel that represent requests to drivers. And so we'll build some driver which is going to be fairly uh, interesting in this particular module. And finally in the last module I'm going to show you another fully fledged driver that does some interesting stuff based on the things we've learned and we'll see some other extra features that we haven't seen previously. This is the first course that's going to be dealing with writing kernel drivers on Windows. So a little bit about me, I'm a developer, I'm a trainer, I'm an author, I've written a few books. Some of them are actually related to a device driver such as the Windows kernel programming book and the Windows internals book are always relevant for anything that's going on in the Windows space. And of course you can go ahead and search uh, things uh, on the web uh, if you are interested to learn more. So let's start with an introduction to the course. The goals of the course is to understand how to write simple kernel drivers for Windows. We need to understand the programming model and the way we actually work to build and deploy and debug simple kernel drivers. So I expect you to have a good understanding of Windows internal concepts. You can try looking at other courses on Pentester Academy to gain some of the knowledge that you need. You must have some experience writing applications for Windows in C or C++. There's simply too much stuff going on for me to, to go through that as well. You can go ahead and look at the Windows System Programming courses on Pentester Academy that should give you the proper background for that, uh, for that kind of thing. And if you have some familiarity with WinDebug, this is highly recommended because we're going to use WinDebug to uh, debug a kernel driver once we get to some more complex drivers. And again, there is a course on Pentester Academy that deals with WinDebug in user mode and kernel mode. So I expect you to be a developer, perhaps a researcher that wants to try uh, writing some drivers to test functionality, to see how things behave in the kernel or for whatever uh, reason. And so here are some more resources you might find interesting that are related to writing drivers. So we have these books, first the Windows Internals book which is kind of the, the classic way to learn about the basic architecture and fundamentals of Windows. Then we have my book which is specifically for kernel uh, driver programming. And there's an older book from 2003 called The Programming the Windows Driver Model by Walter Oni, which is fairly old, however, it's still relevant for understanding uh, stuff about the kernel, especially if you want to uh, understand how to write drivers for hardware devices, which is not the focus of this course. But still, this book could be a valuable resource if you want to learn more. As I mentioned, I have a few courses on Pentester Academy that deal with the prerequisite needed for this particular course. So Windows System Programming Fundamentals is the first one to give you a basic idea of how to program against Windows. And then we have these two courses for uh, user mode and kernel mode handling using WinDebug because WinDebug is the only debugger capable of debugging kernel mode code. And so we need to understand how to use that debugger. So without further ado, let's go over to the first module dealing with the I.O. system. 